الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد all praise and thanks be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Alhamdulillah we have gathered again in this masjid to learn the deen of Allah may Allah accept it and may Allah help us to learn it and understand it the way the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained it to the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum so the topic that we are looking at today is about the one a person who denies qadr what is qadr the divine decree that Allah Everything has been decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has knowledge about everything. We'll understand what is Qadr and we'll understand the hukum about the, a person who denies it. So, it is an obligation to have Iman, to have faith in Al Qadr. It's part of your belief. If a person doesn't believe in Al Qadr, he says, Allah doesn't know what happens, whatever happens, Allah knows after it happens, then this is disbelief. And we'll see the evidences for that today, inshallah. So the four things that we have to believe about Qadr. First is that Allah knows everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ilm about everything. As Allah says in chapter 8, ayah 75, Verily Allah is the all-knower of everything. So we have to believe that Allah knows everything. What has happened, what will happen, and what didn't happen the way it should have happened. So Allah is aware of everything. He has full knowledge about everything. So this is the first thing that you have to believe about Qadr. That Allah knows everything. He has the ilm. Allah has the full knowledge. Second is that everything has been written down. Everything has been written down. So 50,000 years before the creation of this world. Before the heavens and the earth were created, 50,000 years before the creation of heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered, we'll look at the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu explained that Allah had written the ordained majors of the creation 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and the earth and his, and his arsh was on the water. This hadith in Sahih al-Muslim. So everything that's happening, we are sitting here, we're talking about this, the, the words that I'm going to say, what you're going to listen, what you're going to understand, from it, how you're going to act upon it. Everything, all this knowledge Allah had and Allah had got it written down in Lawh al Mahfuz 50,000 years before these heavens and the earth were created. Imagine the greatness of your Rabb. Imagine this Allah that we worship. We have to know the names, the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to know our Rabb. So these things help us glorify Him. When we did this sujood, we just prayed. We know we are pray, praying and worshipping the Lord, the Rabbul Alameen, who is so magnificent, so glorified. So the next hadith is Allah ordered the pen. So Allah created the kalam. Kalam is the pen. And Allah created the pen. And the first thing Allah ordered the pen is to write the records of all the things that are going to happen until the hour established, until Yomul Kiyama, everything that will happen. All that was written by the pen, the kalam. They read Abi Hafsa, Ubada bin Samit said to his son, O oh son, you shall not get the true sense of Iman until you know that what has befallen you was not going to miss you. Whatever has occurred with you was not going to miss you. It was already destined, it was written down, it's already been written. And what missed you was not going to befall upon you. What didn't reach you was not going to happen to you. I heard the Prophet ﷺ saying, As soon as Allah created the pen, He commanded it saying, Write. Allah gave the command to the pen, Write. It said, the pen said, What should I write, my Lord? Allah said, Write the record of all things to happen till the establishment of the hour. So he's telling, oh my son, I have heard Allah Wasallam saying, he who dies believing other than this is not from me. A person who does not believe that Allah has everything written down is not from the Muslims. 
It's not from the people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third thing that we have to believe about the first is that Allah has the ilm. Allah has the knowledge of everything. Second, all of this was written down. It has been written by the kalim in the sacred tablet we call law al-mahfuz. Right? Law al-mahfuz. We, we all have heard this word. So everything, that whole, the whole divine decree, everything that's going to happen till Yawm al has been written and is saved in this, in this uh, law al-mahfuz. So we have to believe in those two. The third thing we believe is that Allah willed everything. Whatever happens, happens by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing can happen without his will. If Allah didn't will that you and me gathered here, we wouldn't have been here. So nothing happens without the will and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have a will, right? We have some permission. For example, you will, you go and you do something which you should not have done. Allah told you not to do something, but you went and you did it. Even when you did it, you did it by your own will. You were not forced by Allah. But you were able to do it under the permission of the will of Allah. So the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supersedes your will. You cannot do something that you want which goes against the will of Allah. If Allah doesn't wish that you be here, even if you wanted to, you could not reach here. So everything is under the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The command is for him alone. And the fourth thing we have to believe is that Allah created everything. He is the creator of everything. So everything that has been created, Allah is the creator. He is the khaliq. So Allah created us and Allah created the willpower that we have and Allah created the abilities that we have. We stand, we sit. All this is created by who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why everything is under his creation, everything under his will. So we have to believe in these things about Qadr. So what are the types of Qadr? There are four types of Qadr. One, we understood is the highest type, which is, which was written by the Kalam and is saved in the sacred tablet. This Qadr cannot change. It has written everything from before the creation till Yawmul Qiyamah. Everything has been written in Lawal Mahfuz. Everything is safe in that. It is not editable. Number two, the will, the Qadr Umari of your life. So as we look at the person's livelihood, his life term, the deeds that he will do, his status in the year after, all this written, when is it written? In the Hadith we know, the Prophet mentioned that when the baby is in the mother's womb. So for 40 days he is a blood clot, then 40 days he is an alak, and then 40 days and then when the ruh is being blown into him, at that time his qadar for his whole life is written down. So this is qadar al umari for your whole life. The next is qadar al which happens for your yearly qadar. What will happen for you for this specific year? When is that come down? Laylatul Qadr, the night of the decree. So your annual Qadr is written down and give, given down to the angels that this is what all is going to happen this year for this person is in your Laylatul Qadr. And then there is also a daily Qadr. Yaomi, what will you do that specific day? So the last three, the, what will you do in your life? What will happen in this year? What will happen in daily Qadr? Can it be changed? Can the, the Qadr be changed? Through dua, yes. So the Prophet ﷺ said, the only thing that can change your qadr, your divine decree is dua. So if you make dua, it can change. Which can change? These three. But the one which is in law al-mahfuz cannot change. So how do we understand this? So when dua can change it, so it was written that you will not make it to reach the class today. But you made dua, Ya Allah, I want to learn the deen, please make it easy for me. Alhamdulillah, you managed, you reached the class. Or you got sick, you made dua, you got better. And that, that happened because of the change. So in Lah al Mahfuz, it was already written that this is written for this person, but he will make dua and this hukum will change. So Allah knows everything. So even that you will make dua and Allah will change that, that has already been written in Lah al Mahfuz, that doesn't change. That is like the master copy, non-editable, but has all the information. So it's clear. 
So that's why we have to make dua. Dua changes your qadr. If you have some problems, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That has been taught. Dua is a weapon of the Muslim, as Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. So we should keep using it. So we look at the evidences. So two men from, came from Basra. From who? There was a person at that time called Ma'bad al-Juhani. He was the first person who started denying the divine decree. He said everything happens without the decree of Allah. So two men came from Basra to the Sahaba. So in that time, uh, after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so they met uh, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And they told him that this Ma'bad al-Juhani is denying Qadr. What do you say about it? So in the hadith is in Sahih Muslim. So Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, by him, yani by Allah, in whose hand is the soul of Ibn Umar. So he's taking in, he's swearing on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the one who holds my life, if anyone possessed gold amount of Uhud mountain, how much gold? Have you seen the Uhud mountain? People have gone for Umrah. How big is Uhud? Even if you had that much of gold and you spent it all in the cause of Allah, you spent it in the way of Allah, you gave it in charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this much gold, Allah would not accept it unless he believes in Qadr. If you did not believe in Qadr, Allah will not accept even that much of gold if you gave it in charity. What does it mean? Because Allah accepts only from the believers. So if you are not believing in Qadr, you are a disbeliever. So your good deeds, your charity that is not getting accepted. And then he cited as evidence. So he gave the dalil. Why he is saying that? What was the basis of him saying that? So he said, evidence, the words of Prophet ﷺ, Iman is to believe in Allah. So he is quoting the Rasul ﷺ has taught us that Iman is to believe in Allah, to believe in his angels. The six things that we believe. So believe in Allah, believe in his angels, believe in his revealed books, believe in the messengers, believe on the day of resurrection, Yawmul Qiyamah, and the sex believe in al qadr the divine decree the good and the bad of it so we all have to believe in this so he quoted this ayat the this hadith as evidence and told that the guy who denies qadr he has denied his iman and then he told to go and tell him tell them i am free of them and they are free from me ibn umar radiallahu anhu making it a sahaba look at them if somebody is coming with a deviation, with a doubt, they don't say we all have a common understanding, it's okay. No, this is denying Iman. No, we are clear, we are, we are free from you. We do not believe the way you believe. We have to make it very clear this for these kind of things. You don't say it's a difference of opinion. This is a, something very big, denying the Qadr is. It's a very big deviation. The next hadith is reported by Ubadah bin Sabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said to his son, O oh son, you will never get the taste of Iman. You know the taste of Iman, the sweetness of Iman. When a person has Iman, he feels a sweetness in his heart. So it is something which is a big blessing of Iman. So you will never get the taste of Iman until and unless you realize that what has afflicted you was not to miss you. And what has missed you was not to afflict you. So if you have been sick, it was destined. You couldn't have avoided that. You would say, oh, I, if I didn't go there, if I didn't sit next to that brother, some brother say, you know, he's feeling sick, he's got allergy, I sit next to him, I'll get it. If it was destined for you, it's going to happen. It could not miss you. So we have to believe in this. So he said, you will not taste the sweetness of faith unless you understand this matter. I heard Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi saying, the first thing Allah created, the same hadith that we understood, the first thing Allah has created was the pen. He ordered it to write. It said, my Lord, what should I write? He said, write down the destinies of all the things until the establishment of the hour. So everything has been already written down. What has happened, what is happening with you has already written and is already in the knowledge of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then he said, oh my son, I heard Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, who dies, be careful, who dies believing something other than this does not belong to me. In a slightly different version which is narrated in, by Imam Ahmed, the first thing Allah created was the pen. He said to it, write and in that very hour all what was to occur until the day of resurrection has been written. 
In another narration by Ibn Wahhab, Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whoever does not believe in Qadr, whether good or bad, will be burned by Allah in the hellfire. So denial of Qadr is what? Disbelief. It will take you to the hellfire. This Qadr is a very sensitive topic. Do not get too much into it. Be careful. But you have to believe in the thing that we understood about Qadr. It is reported, reported in Musnad Ahmad and Sunan Abi Dawood on the authority of Ibn Ad Dailami that he said, I went to Ubay bin Kaab. So he went to Ubay bin Kaab. May Allah be pleased with him. And I said to him, so he went to Ubay bin Kaab and he told him, there is something within me. So I have some kind of a doubt in me regarding Al Qadr. Please narrate to me something that perhaps by it Allah would take it, the doubt from my heart. So what do we learn from this first is Ad-Dilemi when he had this doubt, what did he do? He didn't go and ask, oh brothers, what do you think, what is your opinion? He went to the person of knowledge, Ubay bin Kaab was a knowledgeable Sahabi. So he went, so we should always go when you have something. It's not like, okay, what do you think about it? Let us think together. No, go to the people of knowledge who are firm in knowledge will give you one eye or one hadith and make it clear for you. But you could go to somebody who is not knowledgeable and you can get more confused. Because there is a very sensitive topic. So he went, always asked the people of knowledge. So he went and he asked him. And then Ubay bin Kaab said, again look at the statement. He said, even if you spend gold equal to the weight of Uhud mountain, Allah will not accept it until you believe in Qadr. And know that what has afflicted you was not to miss you and what has missed you was not to afflict you. And if you die believing something other than this, then you are one of the people of hellfire. What do we realize from this? If you see, he went to Ubay bin Kaab. Previous two hadiths, we saw one from Abdullah ibn Umar. The second was from the other Sahabi, Ubadah bin Asamit. And this Ubay bin Kaab is... Making a combination of both two. The first one to spoke about Uhud, second one spoke about believing in Qadr, that you're believing whatever has reached you was destined to reach you. So we learn that they all learned from the same source, from Prophet. This is how he taught them about Qadr. So Qadr is very important to understand that we believe in it. Denying it is Kufr. May Allah protect us all from that. And then he said, I then went to Abdullah bin Masood and Hudayfa bin al Yaman and Zaid bin Sabit, and they all reported something similar from the Prophet to me. So the above hadith is quoted in Al Hakim. So what we understand? Believe in Qadr is mandatory, is an obligation. Whoever denies Qadr has denied what has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad, it is disbelief. May Allah protect us all, may Allah guide us and keep us firm. Upon the deen of Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Zakallahu khairan wa akhirul dawan. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.